abs or no abs? Why do some people have them and why don't others? Well, the simple solution is they probably eat bad and they probably don't work out. No, that's not true. Because some people work out and they eat decent, but some people have the abs and some people don't. Now, before we go on, please give the video a like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, hit subscribe. Now, when it comes to abdominals, we gotta understand that it takes reps. Now, some people were born with abs. Maybe they're really active kids when they were younger, and so they already had that muscle sitting into their ab section. But when it comes to the everyday person, the abs are going to come, they're just going to take time. And you need massive amounts of reps. Abs are more of a slow twitch muscle, so they're not gonna build instantly like your biceps, your calves, or your quads. And so as such, you gotta repeatedly do them over the course of time. And I'm not talking days, weeks, months, I'm talking years. In fact, it took me about two to three years of doing abs every single day with every single client like, I didn't see abs for the first two years, I'll tell you that much. So if I did them every day, minimum three times a day, and I was doing probably a thousand reps a day, and didn't get abs for two years, it's gonna take time to see yours if you're not putting in that much effort. And so, number one is that you have to understand that abs require repetition. If you're looking for great ab routines, go into the video section. I put out some wicked belly burn abs sections that you can do, do one set, 30 seconds every single day, seven days a week. It'll only take you about three to four minutes, but I'm gonna tell you, all those reps are gonna add up. The second thing we have to understand is the principle of overload. So let's say you're just getting going, or you've been doing this for a couple months, or even if you were doing abs, and then you go on an all-inclusive trip, and you don't, you do your abs, then we gotta understand that there's a thing called the principle of overload. So you're gonna see the most amount of results on the front end. So when you started working out, all the things that you've done at the beginning are going to get you a bigger transition. You're gonna to start to see a little bit more shape on the front end, but eventually your body starts to get used to that resistance and that load. And so over time, you either have to add more resistance to the reps that you're currently doing. So example of that would be like doing a weighted trunk twist or a weighted crunch, or you have to do a different type of ab exercise that could be a little bit more difficult and creates more of that burning effect right away, or you have to do more repetitions of the same exercises. So if you started doing 20 crunches a day, seven days a week, and that created some level of soreness into those abs or you can feel it the next day, the week after, you might actually have to go up to 21 right? And by 52 weeks, you might need to do 75 to 100 crunches every single day just to get that same effect. Your body gets conditioned to it. So the second thing is that you have to be overloading the abs so that you stimulate more muscle growth in that area so that the muscle pops out. You also get the density of fascia in the area from reps and the overload. So your reps plus your overload are going to create more dense muscle, so muscle density into that area. So you're gonna see more visibility, you're gonna see more cut lines, because over time the muscle starts to develop, the fascia starts to shrink, and it starts to wrap in and around those muscles, and it's gonna give it more a deep defined look. So the more reps, the more you overload it, eventually it's gonna build more fascia into that abdominal area, and you're gonna see more cuts. Now, the thing is you can have a ton of muscle, so if you go look at power lifters, and those power lifters, I don't know what those guys are eating, but those guys are massive. And those guys are probably the strongest people on this planet Earth. But the problem is, is that they just don't have abs. They, because they have a lot of body fat and visceral fat in that area. To me, that looks like visceral fat. That distending stomach is all visceral fat. So that's fat that's sitting over the vital organs, primarily the stomach, right? And so their, their stomach sticks out, they're huge, they're jacked, they're so strong but their body fat is way too high, okay? It's way too high for them to see any sort of abdominals. When it comes to abs, in my personal history, we start to see more lines and shapes in and around 20 to 22% body fat. And that's according to the Omron scale. Now, once you get into that 15, 17, you're gonna start to see more of that dense fascia look. And the more reps you do, obviously, the more muscle you're gonna build. But once you get into that 11, to 12% body fat ratio onto the Omron scale, that's when the body fat is low enough. And as long as you've got the muscle density in that area, then you're gonna be able to see those abs. Because you can't have 
muscle visibility that doesn't exist. So if you just went on a starvation diet and you decided that you're just going to drop all your body fat through a caloric deprivation, which will work, but if you have no abs in there and no muscle, there's nothing to showcase. It's like shrinking a box and then opening the box and there's nothing in it. <laughs> there's no abs, you have to do the reps, okay? And the last but not least is what are your genetics like? Primarily, how were you raised? And then what is your daily activities? Because if you look at a soccer player's body versus a swimmer's body, a soccer player is going to have more lean, dense, thick muscle into the lower body because they don't, they don't use their hands. They use their hands to run. Uh, they might push guys off with their hands, but primarily they're not running on their hands. They're not throwing footballs. They're not tackling guys, okay? They're using 90% of their legs. Now, if you look at a swimmer, the swimmer is using their legs as well, just like a run or a soccer player would use their upper body for running. The swimmer would use their legs like a soccer player would use their arms, but primarily everything is happening through that upper body. And so if you look at a swimmer's back and you look at their shoulders and their arms and even into their serratus and into their abs, they're gonna be a lot more jacked in the upper body than the soccer player that uses primarily their lower body. So you gotta look at the types of activities that you're doing. Now, typical bodybuilders, and it seems like people that go to a typical bodybuilder gym, they do like four upper body days to one lower body day, which I don't get. And especially for, for women, when they wanna focus on their booty and their thighs, then they will primarily do leg day, but they'll skip upper body day or they'll skip abs. But you gotta remember how they all tie into one, one another. So the best type of workout that you can do is gonna be a proportion between if you wanna focus on lower body, then you should do three lower body exercises, but you should still do two upper body exercises. And then depending on the type of ab workout you're gonna do, you want anywhere from three to four abs that you're gonna do every single day. Because again, abs take time to build up that dense muscle. So they need more repetition, they need to be overloaded over the course of time in order for them to pop out. So there we have it. Why do some people have abs and some don't? Well, it comes to how many reps did they do? Have they been overloading? Do they have the deep, dense fascia that comes with time and reps and resistance? What's their body fat like? What's their visceral fat like? What was the genetics that they came into the game with? Some people just can't like get that shape of abs, like even great athletes don't get them. And what are their activities that they do on a daily basis? Now, if you're looking to get abs, we have a program. It's called the 28 Day Belly Burn Program. Go to our website, www.fitclub.fit. Mention the belly burn, and we'll get you started today. Hit the like button. Make sure that you're subscribed, and we'll see you on the next video.